So you're thinking of investing in some solar panels to allow you to generate your own electricity and help reduce your energy bills. But how much electricity are you likely to generate? And will the savings you achieve make it a worthwhile investment? In part one of this video, we look at the factors that influence how much solar power generated electricity you're likely to produce. In part two, we'll walk through a couple of free and easy to use calculation methods that allow you to determine whether solar power might be right for you. To ensure that you're notified as soon as part two is released, please make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell icon. Before we get started, it's worth just a very quick look at some terminology that we'll encounter. These are KW or kilowatt and KWH or kilowatt hour. Starting with a kilowatt. A kilowatt is a unit of power equal to 1000 watts. It's often used to specify how much power an electrical device uses. The higher the kilowatt rating of a device, the more electrical power it uses. For example, a low powered electrical appliance like an LED TV only uses around 100 watts or 0.1 kilowatts, even if it has a really big screen. On the other hand, a typical kitchen kettle has a power rating of 3000 watts or 3.0 kilowatts, which is why it makes sense not to fill your kettle every time you just want enough boiling water for a single cup of tea or coffee. Moving on to a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is used to specify how much energy an electrical device uses and is the product of the power rating in kilowatts and the length of time the device is used. So, the higher the power rating in kilowatts and the longer it is used, the more electrical energy is consumed, i.e. kilowatt hours. Taking our earlier example, if you sat and watched your big screen LED TV for 10 hours, then you would consume one kilowatt hour of energy. That's 10 hours at 0.1 kilowatts. If, however, you boiled your kettle for 10 hours, although we don't recommend you do that, you would consume 30 kilowatt hours of energy. That's 10 hours of 3.0 kilowatts and end up with a big bill and a steamy kitchen. In the context of solar panels, we use kilowatt and kilowatt hour to specify how much power and energy they generate rather than how much they consume. Whilst we cannot control how much the sun shines, the location of your home could have a significant impact. This is because different parts of the country get different amounts of sunlight, which will affect how much electricity your solar panels can generate. For example, a solar PV system in the south of the UK might typically generate around 30% more than an identical one in the Shetland Islands. But don't despair if you don't live on the sunny Isle of Wight. Solar panels work well even in parts of the UK that get less sunlight. Assuming you're not going to relocate just to get more sunshine, the single biggest influence on how much electricity you can generate will be how many solar panels you have. Although ground mounted panels are probably easier and cheaper to install, as no scaffolding would be required, not many people in the UK have enough available land to make this a realistic option. For most people then, installing solar panels on your roof makes the most sense and so the amount of usable roof space will dictate the number of solar panels you can install. With individual solar panels generally measuring around 2 meters by 1 meter, solar PV installations in the UK typically comprise between 4 and 12 panels, depending on whether you live in a smaller terraced house, a medium sized semi or a detached property. Larger detached homes will obviously provide even more roof space, allowing installations of 16, 20 or even more panels. It's still quite common to hear people say that solar panels only make sense if you have a south-facing roof. But whilst it's true that south-facing panels 
will generate the most energy, east, west or even north facing panels can still generate significant amounts of electricity. As well as determining how much energy they'll produce, the direction that your panels face will also dictate what time of day they'll generate the most. East facing panels work best in the morning and then as the sun moves across the sky south facing panels start to generate energy with the peak around midday. As the sun moves further round in the afternoon and early evening west facing panels start to work best. Although north facing panels are by their nature much less effective a large array of such panels can still generate worthwhile amounts of energy. And of course in many situations solar panels can be installed on more than one section of roof such that they face in a variety of directions with electricity being generated throughout the day. Although solar panels can be installed on flat roofs it's probably fair to say that the majority of properties in the UK have sloping or pitched roofs. In the UK Roofs tend to have a pitch of between 30 and 40 degrees and all but the steepest roofs should be suitable for solar panels. The pitch of the roof determines the angle at which the solar panels will face the sun and this will impact how much electricity they will generate. A sloping roof that faces south is therefore the best location to install solar panels. Although not the most significant factor determining how much energy your panels will generate, the roof pitch can impact your production, depending on location, by a few percent. Whilst solar panels don't need to be in direct sunlight to work, shade can make them less effective, to varying degrees. If your roof area and thus panels are clear of shade throughout the day all year round then your panels will generate to the maximum possible for your location. Many properties may experience modest levels of shading perhaps due to a chimney stack or a nearby tree. This is likely to result in the roof being partially shaded occasionally during the day or in some months of the year. As shading becomes more significant for example due to the shape of the roof or increased numbers of nearby trees, some parts of the roof will then be regularly shaded either daily or throughout the year. Heavy shading where the roof is frequently shaded daily throughout the year might typically occur due to the proximity of a nearby taller building, in which case electricity generation is likely to be significantly impacted. So, to recap, the factors that will influence how much solar power generated electricity you're likely to produce are Location Where in the country you live Number of panels The size of your solar panel array Direction Which way your panels face Roof type and pitch The angle at which your panels face the sun and shading, how much and how frequently your panels are in the shade. One last bit of terminology which crept in earlier, KWP or kilowatt peak. Kilowatt peak is used to specify the peak power of an individual solar panel or when put together with others a complete solar array. The rating in kilowatts peak is the rate at which the panel or array of panels generate energy at their peak performance. Solar panels are available in a range of sizes and ratings, but at the time of making this video, panels in the range of around 400 to 450 watts peak were typically being installed on residential properties. Smaller and larger panels, both in size and rating, are of course available. So, if we installed 12 solar panels, each with a 400 watt peak rating, our solar array would have an overall rating of 4.8 kilowatt peak. Unfortunately, having a rating of 4.8 kilowatt peak does not mean that we'll be generating 4.8 kilowatts of electricity all the time. In fact, at many times of the day and year, it will be a lot less. 
The main reason is of course that the sun won't be shining all the time. But it's also because the power rating of solar panels is calculated under a standardised test for panels across all manufacturers to ensure that the values listed are capable of comparison. This standardised test does not represent what is experienced under real world conditions on your roof. So to work out how much electricity you'll generate in practice, we need to use some nifty online calculators. But for that, I'm afraid you'll have to wait for part two. If you liked this video, please don't forget to click on the thumbs up icon and make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell icon so you're alerted as soon as it's released. Thanks for watching.